Hello and welcome to Citizens Forum. This is being filmed on Wednesday, is it December the 17th, on, uh, in Victoria, B.C. I'd like to thank our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this happen. Uh, our first guest in this segment is Norm Ryder, and Walter and I are both going to do the interview. And we're going to be talking about something we all hear the, the name of, but don't really know much about, called WorkSafe BC. And uh, Norm, maybe you can start off by just telling us what happened in your case. Well, what happened was in 1972, I was doing a survey project for the provincial government near Kelowna, and I got hit with a very large dose of microwave radiation from the piece of survey equipment that I was working with. It was to measure long distances. When I passed in front of the beam, I felt a warming on the side of my face, and it bothered me for a couple of days, and the warming sensation went away. No one paid much attention to it. And apart from the interesting experience, I ignored it until, well, actually a few years ago, I had a acoustic neuroma tumor, which is one of the tumors that they recognize as being caused by microwave radiation. I had that removed in 2001, and that pretty much crippled me up from then on. I can't hear in one ear and various other problems. Had it removed a second time. It's a benign tumor, but I had it removed a second time in 2010. And it's finally, I drew the connection between the microwave radiation, the side of my face, and the whole thing and made a claim to work safe BC. When I made the claim with them, they there's all these very neat little rules that they say they follow, but they don't follow the rules and refuse to accept the the evidence on file and use that as a justification to deny the claim. Now once I got into it the whole thing I realized that that's a standard practice of WorkSafe BC to not accept the facts in the file, rule against the person. One woman I know spent thousands of dollars to get <coughs> on a lawyer to get her claim looked at properly. Then just recently her husband is going through a similar situation where I just found out today that the case manager phoned up the medical specialist and told the medical specialist not to look at certain things that were caused by the accident and it just keeps going on another person this morning also when he heard I was coming in told me a similar story and then he topped it off afterwards by saying that he had a bad experience as an employee and as an employer he doesn't think they're looking after him any better so begin to wonder who is work safe BC working for. They're not working for the employees. They don't seem to be working for the employers. And on top of that, they, the CEO gets over half a million dollars, or up almost half a million dollars a year in salary. The other senior executives do well. And their total above their projected liabilities, uh, putting money aside for that, they made $800 million this year. Can you explain how they didn't look after you in your case, which again you say was caused when you happened to walk through the beam of a uh, just a microwave beam being being used in a piece of survey equipment. Well, at the time, no one thought it was much yeah. of an issue, <coughs> but it was only when I drew things together and I had to do a lot of research. The equipment is no longer used, partly I think because they know that it's dangerous. Ten years later, they were telling people to stay 25 feet away from it. I passed within inches of it. I got the specs on the machine and the equipment, worked out how much radiation I got hit, which is three times more than the WorkSafe BC regulations say you're, is acceptable. But the medical advisor looking at the case decided to use a num another number that was just a preliminary estimate of what was involved and refuses to uh, go back and say, oh, made a mistake, I looked at the wrong number. That is that what you, he just looked at the wrong number? Essentially that, I mean, the difference is I was hit with 31 watts per square meter 
and the number he's using is 4.8 watts per square meter. Now that probably those numbers don't mean anything to anyone, but that is approximately, 31 is approximately 100 times what a cell phone gives off. So it's significantly different. And I finally was able to prove to WorkSafe that they, the doctor did not look at the right numbers, so they opened a new file for me. But they can't make a decision on the new file because they made a ruling on the old file and they can't change their mind. It makes, doesn't make a lot of sense, especially when they have a regulation that says that if they find a person that made a claim, gave incorrect information, they can reopen the claim and take the benefits away from the person. Well, this is exactly the same thing, only headed the other direction. Apparently, there's regulations that they can't, they can only do this one way. They can't turn things around. And because of that whole experience, that's one of the reasons why I, I wanted to talk to you about this, is I would like people that are finding they are not being treated fairly by WorkSafe and their WorkSafe is not following the rules to contact me. It's about time the people started going back to WorkSafe that it's not doing its job properly. You know, I've, I've been on uh, with WorkSafe BC with workers' compensation uh, as an employer. I've been, you know, dealing with them all my life. And um, I was quite astonished when you said today that they had uh, collected $800 million more than what was necessary to administrate the program and to pay out the claims this year. So you can imagine the amount of money that these guys have in, the, in, their, in their kitty someplace. And you'd, my first reaction is, hey, I'm paying those guys every month. Well, Why to, don't be, they to be fair, that part of that profit is profit on their invested income. Yeah. But if they're playing with that type of money, you shouldn't be paying the premiums you have to pay. One would think. I mean, or they uh, should look after the workers. Yeah, better. and uh, what are they? Are they investment managers, or are they, in, you know, are they actually looking at the health and welfare of workers in this province? And it just doesn't appear that they are. They see. I think they're much more inclined to to have this uh, investment thing going. And as you say, the CEO was making half a million a year. You know, they're all doing quite well, thank you. So you don't like contributing to the WorkSafe BC Investment Club? <laughs> you <laughs> Pretty <laughs> well. I mean, it, it, this is happening all across Canada, Well, it, it, this is it. I mean, I, I met somebody else that had experience in Ontario and Alberta that almost matched exactly what I was talking about. And that was this morning. It seems every time I turn around, there's somebody else that has almost the exact same story. Yeah. And I mean, this is the worker side of it. You say from the employer side, you're beginning to wonder about the premiums you're paying. Who are they working for? Well, I, I, I came across a story like this many, many years ago of somebody whose life had just been ruined. And from that point on, I had the impression it was called, you know, it was Workers' Compensation yeah. Board then, but that they're definitely not working for people who are injured. I think if somebody's at work and they get a broken leg and you've got to be off work for two months, they'll probably treat you like a king and give yeah. you everything you need. Um, but if, if people get seriously injured at work and require long-term support, then they don't seem to want to talk to you. And they'll just cut you off. And I mean, that's my impression of how it works. Well, actually, we were talking about it this morning. And it seems that, yeah, if, they, if you break a leg, they're good about it. But soft tissue issue or injuries, they have a real problem dealing with that. They will find any excuse to not deal with the issue. Um, can lawyers help? I wish they could. Uh, most lawyers, if you go to them and talk to them about a WorkSafe BC case, they don't talk to you, they run and hide. A few of them will tell you, oh, WorkSafe BC doesn't work to the normal rules of the legal system. None of them will take the case on on contingency. So the only way that that friend of mine won was because she was able to afford to put thousands of dollars up. 
to do it, that the lawyers know that even if you've got a good solid case, they don't have a reasonable probability of getting paid. And I don't blame them for not taking the case, mm -hmm. but it leaves the poor worker out in the cold that every time you take it to the various appeal levels that works at BC, their people throw in more and more confusing pieces of information that make no sense whatsoever. They just make these up and then you've got to argue against that in the next round. But because you hadn't argued it against it before they had made that fact up, that proves their fact is correct. Yeah, you know, in, you know, the in, up in the interior when those two sawmills blew up, there's lots of reports uh, from all all sorts going to WorkSafe BC that these very were very dangerous mills. They didn't move in to, to shut down the mill or to clean those mills up and enforce regulations, which they should have been doing. And then on the other hand, when people do get injured, they deny their claims. So you know, it's quite obvious that it isn't fair. I mean, we know. They should be getting out there and doing their job better and, and making sure our workers don't get injured. Uh, but their enforcement is just not there. And again, you were injured walking through the beam of yeah. a, I, I, a I surveying. Passed, I passed within four inches of it, and this is really critical right. in microwave radiation, that anywhere in what they call the near or intermediate field, you can get serious spikes of radiation. If you get further out, with, in my case, that was six meters away. I was never six meters away from the unit. Uh, then you get into what they call the far field, and that's where that standard inverse square law applies. If you look at something like a, a cell tower well, transmission. I mean the further away you get, it drops yeah. off very quickly. Yeah, then, I mean, everyone knows that rule. Uh, cell towers, there's reports of some of them are you have to be 240 meters away from them before you're out of the intermediate field zone where these spikes about 100 times can hit you. Yeah. So you say here that they have denied me due process. Um, you say it's, it's comparable to being wrongfully convicted based on information known to be false? Well, that, that's quite correct. That what I would have thought that any government process would give you due process and look at the facts when they made a decision. In this case, they literally created their own information and then ruled against me on the information that they created that has nothing to do with the facts. And, I and, don't then, and then they admitted the mistake, but the second case can't go ahead because they ruled against you in the first case when they were using wrong information. Is that? about it? That's, that pretty much summarizes that. I'm trying to get a meeting with the <coughs> Minister of Labor on this. Uh, lots of luck on that. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, someone's got to look at this process. It's, it's not working. The whole process is broken. Well, you know, I would say it is working because I think what it's doing is exactly what it's supposed to be doing. It's supposed to be screwing the workers and not protecting them. Well, obviously, denying Norm's claims is, uh, you know, improving the bottom line in the investment fund. Yeah. And yeah, in that sense, it is working perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except that's not what they tell me WorkSafe BC is there for. Have you ever uh, talked to your local MLA on, about this issue? I have, and they keep saying, we well, have to follow the process. Well, I keep trying to explain to them the process is broken. That's right. That somewhere along the line, something's got to be done to reset the process. So it is a legislated body, and they they should be able to change uh, through legislation how they operate, don't you think? Right now, they've got legislation that really protects the worker that if I was working for you, I hurt myself, I have no option. I have to go through WorkSafe BC. I can't sue you even if you really earned it. Yeah. And the, the whole process is designed to push the worker right out of the whole process. But as I say, part of the problem comes in that, okay, so you push the worker out, why are you charging the employer such hefty premiums? And I don't know what the premium for you is, but it's it's a big check every month you've got to write off. Well, it's quite, quite interesting because I've 
been very lucky in this department in, in our job and but uh, on one occasion there was a where well, there was a concern where it was a small injury the worker didn't even want to get it looked yeah. at and I insisted on it and when he was getting patched up the they asked what happened at work and he said yes and my rates doubled mm -hmm. even though we did not make there was no claims made the worker came back to work the same day um, I had known nothing about it until I saw the bill and they doubled my rates and uh, I had to pay them there was no way out mm -hmm. there was no claim made so that was <laughs> such a frustrating thing to experience and I, and I had my taste of how they operate and uh, it was really quite shocking but I did realize and I thought yeah it's it is true the way it is set up if, an, if, if a worker is injured, uh, the employer's quite well protected from being sued, no matter how negligent they are. Mm -hmm. And you're thinking, that in itself is not right either, if they're really negligent. And I find a lot of times um, companies can really cover up how they're doing business. Very hard for a worker to prove that the company was you know, be negligent to the point where it would be a criminal code issue or something like that. Well, I think those sawmill issues you brought up are a good example that WorkSafe yeah. got in there and I guess you could say interfered with the inter investigation enough yeah. that they couldn't lay charges. Yeah. You know, uh, well, Gentlemen, I'm going to jump in right here. We only have two minutes left. Yeah. So, uh, Norm, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about how to rebuild the system or fix it up. Well, their safety prevention area, I think, actually almost works, but they should be separating the, the compensation, that whole section off under an independent oversight body. They do have what they call one, but it's, it's not really WCAT, is an organization of the provincial government, but the WorkSafe BC advertises for employees to work for and make decisions at WCAT, so they're obviously not a hand's length from WorkSafe BC. So that whole thing has to be looked at in proper oversight. It should actually go to a, similar to a court system where you truly have an independent judge and you have the right to actually cross-examine them properly in front of a, a totally unbiased position. That anything less than that the worker is not getting a fair shake. I shouldn't have had to fight this battle for four years with WorkSafe and still be nowhere. Yeah. Norm, thank you very much. And Walter, thank you. I think, uh, I think exactly what you said at the end is the system is not fair, it's not just. It has to be like a court system where both sides have some power yeah. to get to hopefully an honest answer, yeah. and even that's filled with problems. But yeah, it's a mess, folks. WorkSafe BC. Thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.